One of the most mysterious figures in ancient Greek mythology was Charon, the carrier of the souls of the dead across the river Styx or Acheron. But for convenience of presentation, in the future, we will leave only the first option. We can say that Charon acted as a guide from limbo to the afterlife, and the waters of the river Styx, accordingly, were the border between the two worlds. Moreover, Charon himself was neither a god, nor a titan, nor even a man. Born from the union of Erebus and Yucta, eternal darkness and night darkness, Charon did not belong to either world, which further emphasized his borderline role. The image of Charon, as ancient Greek historians believed, came from Egypt, with roots going back to the thousand-year past of the country of the pharaohs. He was traditionally portrayed as a gangly old man, dressed in worn, dirty clothes, with sunken cheeks and an unkempt beard on his emaciated face. Charon's name, also of Egyptian origin, translates to sharp-eyed. For this reason, many legends attributed to Charon's fierce and feverish eyes, literally boring right through. In the process of forming his image, Charon also took on some of the features of the Etruscan god of death. Thus, Charon was often endowed with wings and bird legs, and could also, it will turn into a black raven or soar into the air on a black horse, chasing the dead running away from him. Charon's legendary boat looked more like a primitive ferry. There was no sail on it, and it was controlled only with the help of a long pole. Hermes was often depicted next to Charon. The messenger of the Olympian gods helped the souls of the dead find their way to the kingdom of Hades to find well-deserved peace. Since Charon was the only one who was able to cross the Styx, whose waters were the personification of primitive horror and darkness, it was in the power of Charon to decide which soul would end up in the kingdom of Hades, and which would remain in limbo, being a stranger to both the world of the dead and world of the living. For this reason, the ancient Greeks, and later the Romans, had a custom of placing a silver coin over the eyes or under the tongue of the deceased, so that the soul of the deceased could pay Charon for transportation. However, one rule remained unchanged. An unburied soul could not get onto Charon's boat, even if it was able to pay the mysterious boatman. Similar restrictions applied to living people, whose pass was not a silver coin, but a golden branch from the Garden of Persephone, the wife of the ruler of the underworld. However, the famous Hercules managed to force Charon to transfer himself to the other side. For this, Charon was chained for a year, and the souls of the dead wandered lost in limbo, waiting for the old boatman to be freed. Charon later appears in the late Middle Ages. In the Divine Comedy, Dante Alighieri meets him on the path of his descent into the depths of the underworld. Dante's image of Charon does not undergo noticeable changes, only now Charon is no longer a mysterious creature with a borderline function. In Dante, he is assigned a more modest role as a demon, the first to meet unfortunate sinners. Thanks to everyone who watched this video to the end. To find out about the latest releases, you just need to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. Also, leave your thoughts in the comments and give it a thumbs up. See you soon.